proclaiming the gospel of grace. Learning to live everyday life and multiply grace and peace. Walk in works. If you're walking by works, you won't get grace. All right? Whatever's on that, on that right side of the column, y'all's right side, it, whatever, if you walk in that, you miss out on all this side. They're mutually exclusive. You don't get to walk in both. Are y'all with me? So grace is always contrasted with works. Look at Romans, Romans chapter 4 and verse 4. Now then, to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace. So when you get under works, you don't walk as their grace, but under debt. Did y'all see that? When you, now to him who works, the wages or the return is not counted as grace. You don't get grace, you get what's called debt. And God doesn't owe anybody anything. When you work, you don't get the grace, which is unmerited favor of God. How many of you want God's blessing unearned? You didn't earn it. You don't deserve it. That's what grace is. When you try to perform it yourself, I'm going to make this clear for you today. I'm going to make this clear for you today. Right? You ready? Watch this coach. Uh, Look over at Romans 11 and verse 6. So proud of those Chavis uh, young men. So proud of them. So they're just great, great, great young men. Got great futures. Watch this. In, he, in Romans chapter 11 and verse 6. And if it's by grace, then it is no longer of works. Mutually exclusive. If you're going to operate by grace, you're not going to be operating under works. Otherwise, grace isn't unearned favor. Grace isn't grace. But if it's of works, if you're under works, it is no longer of grace. You can't walk in both of them. Otherwise, work is no longer work. Did y'all see that? They're mutually exclusive. Now look, we, so if you get the columns we're making here. Now let me show you spirit versus flesh because we're going to add one fourth element here. Spirit versus flesh. When you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The Bible says in Galatians. You walk in one, you will not walk in the other. You don't have to try to stop walking in the flesh. The Bible says if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. We're doing it backwards. We're trying to tell people, stop, 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 stop. He says, no, no, teach them how to walk, 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 walk. And automatically they'll stop, 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 stop. Are you with me? Look over at, uh, it's all throughout the Bible, but in Romans, it's consistent. Romans chapter eight, the whole chapter is about this. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things uh, of the spirit. Next. For to be carnally minded or of the flesh minded, that's what carnal means, meat minded, meat headed, right? For to be meat headed, flesh minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal, the fleshly mind is enmity against God for it's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Does this remind you of another verse? Let's say that again. For, so those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Do you know something else the Bible says? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Faith and spirit go together. Flesh and works go together. Did y'all see that? But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Yes, if you're born again, he does. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. He's not his, all right? Now, all right, so that's all review. Y'all got that? Now, here's the fourth element. If you've got two columns in your notes, if you've got two columns in your notes, on the left side, you have, you have uh, faith, um, grace, and spirit. On the right side, you've got law, works, and flesh. Now, let's add this fourth one to, to the left side. Under grace, uh, faith, and spirit, add speaking and believing. Speaking slash believing. Here's what is contrasted with works or doing. On the other side, put doing. All right? Now, watch this. Are you all with me? Turn over in your Bible to Romans chapter 10. The work, the, cause people always say, pastor, make sure you're clear on the, cause we don't want people to get lazy. Here's what your work is as a believer. The work that you do speak and believe. Watch this. Watch now. Let's, let's watch it in the scripture. And I'm going to make this really plain for you. Uh, we're in Romans chapter 10, verse one. Look at this brethren. My heart's desire, Paul writes and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be 
sozoed, healed, set free, delivered, prospered. Same prayer for the church as well. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal, an excitement for God, but not according to epinosis, accurate knowledge, revelation knowledge. For they being ignorant of something. What are they ignorant of? That's what the church is ignorant of too. Of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God, which is the power of the gospel for healing. All right. Why? For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for everyone who believes. Now, I could also slide on on the left side Christ because Christ is opposite. He's opposed to law here. But we won't do that yet. We won't do that. Just keep coming. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who does what? Believes. Believes. Believes in Christ. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law because there's two kinds of righteousness. One by doing, which is old covenant. One by believing and speaking. He's going to explain it here. Watch this. For Moses of the old covenant. And remember what Roman, what John chapter one and verse something says, it says for law, the Moses, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came. Moses, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. John 1 17, something like that. Right? Pitting grace against law again. But watch this. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness, which is of the law. Here's how it works. The man who does, circle does, those things shall live by him. So righteousness of the law, under law, your column of law, does goes. Doing. You have to do to get under that system. But the righteousness of faith, what does it do? Boom, circle that in your Bible. Righteousness of faith speaks, and it speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend. Where is the saying? The saying begins in your heart. Begins in your heart. Are y'all with me? And just stick with me, and we'll see all this all through all the examples in the New Testament. But the righteousness of faith speaks. Say, righteousness of faith speaks. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Next. Or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does righteousness by faith say? Righteousness by faith says this. The word is near you. Where? It's in your own mouth and in your heart. So we see it. This word that I'm to say is in my mouth and in my heart. What word? That is the word of his doing. His performance, which we preach. Are you with me? That if you confess that word confess right there this is many people use these passages to show how you get saved and this is how you get saved but it's also how you get healed it's also how you get debt free it's also how you get rich it's also how you get out of depression this is how you get all of the salvation that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord the word confess is homologia say homologia Two Greek words put together. Homo means same as. That's where we get homosexual. Homo, logia means word of God. Same word as God. Same words of God. If you say the same words of God with your mouth. I'm teaching so good this morning. This is so good. I'm getting excited myself. I wish I was sitting down there hearing me. (laughs) That if you confess with your mouth, say the same thing as God with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord and believe it in your heart because it says you've got to say it in your heart and in your mouth. Remember with your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You'll be sozoed, healed, set freed and delivered. Say the same thing that God says. And right here, Jesus is Lord. God says that in Isaiah, he says, but if, and if you say it with your heart and believe, say it with your mouth and believe it in your heart, you'll be saved. But guess what? Also, the Bible says, by his stripes, you're healed. I say the same thing with my mouth and believe that in my heart, say what he says. Now watch this, stick with me. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Watch this, next. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord over all is what? Rich to all who? Call on him is what? Call on him is Lord. He's rich to you if you need healing. He's rich to you if you need finances. He's rich to you if you need joy. He's rich to everyone who calls on him as Lord. And whoever calls, that's a law. Whenever you see whoever, whosoever, 
Anyone, it's a spiritual law. If anyone does it, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, yellow, brown, it doesn't matter. If you're not saved and do that, it makes you saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be healed, delivered, set free, prospered, saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? So believing is a part of it. And how shall they believe in him in whom they've not heard? You got to hear. Why? Because faith comes by and hearing. That's the next verse. Watch this. And how shall they hear without a... You do need a church and you do need a pastor. And I say that boldly. You do. Because you've heard this passage a million times, but you ain't heard it like this. And how shall they preach unless they're sent? This isn't the job you apply for. God calls you for this one. <laughs> As it is written, how beautiful are the feet. I almost didn't wear my socks today to prove this point. But, but watch this. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news of peace. Of nothing missing and nothing lacking. Who bring glad to... See, if you're going to church somewhere and you ain't hearing good news, you ain't going to the right church. No, no. It does matter where you go to church. Well, my grandmama went to church there and your grandmama died of something there that she shouldn't have. I just got to break it down. Is that too strong? Thank you, Adrian. <laughs> Adrian gets every word that I say too. She, she really gets it. How shall they preach unless they're sent? And as it is written, how beautiful the be those who preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things next. But they have not obeyed the gospel. They have not all obeyed the gospel. What? Obedience is in the new covenant. When we talk about being obedient, we're not talking about being obedient to the law. That's the outcome of the obedience of faith. Obedience of the gospel. How do you obey the gospel? Believe it. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing. Faith doesn't come by having heard. Faith doesn't come by having heard one time. So many people miss it, miss it because they hear once a week. All right. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Jesus said it like this. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The same way you need food every day is the same way you need hearing the word every day. Come on, y'all. This is why you need to get the CDs, get the tapes, get them. So you could, we don't have tapes. We got CDs and downloads. Oh, I went back, back to old school. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. All right. So watch this. So did you see that? Now turn over to second Corinthians chapter four, verse 13. The whole spirit of faith under the new covenant is believing and speaking. The whole spirit of, here it is. And since we have the same spirit of faith, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13, according to what is written, I believed and therefore spoke. Believing and speaking go together. Did y'all see that? The spirit of faith is believing and speaking. We also believe and therefore we speak. The spirit of faith is believing and speaking. All right, I'm going to make this very practical to you if you'll just stick with me. Watch this. Look over at Mark chapter 11, verse 20 through 24. We looked at this early in the series. Sometimes people call this Hagen 20, 20, 20 through 24. Hagen 11, 20. Because Kenneth Hagen, this, got, this verse has got him out of his bed of affliction at age 17. He lived well into his 80s. Watch this. Now in the morning as they passed, y'all remember we talked about this. They saw the fig tree which Jesus cursed the law Self, uh, self performance in the fig tree gets there, part one and two and three, all in the series. We talked about that dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed is has withered away. Look at what Jesus says. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Now that the law is dead, you're not walking in the law, self performance. Now have faith. But watch what he says. And I, for, for surely I say to you, whoever says, not whoever does to this mountain, but whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt where in his heart, but believes, speaks and believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. That's the spirit of faith, speaking and believing. Watch Jesus enact it. He, act, he activates it here. Therefore, I say. Because whatever you, whatever you say, whatever you believe, he says, whoever so say to this mountain, be removed and be cast on the sea and not doubt in his heart, believe those things which he says should come to pass, who have whatever he says. Therefore, I say it. Because of that law, I say. Watch what he says. Whatever things you ask. 
come on, somebody. Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now, y'all got to stick with me in part two because I'm going to break this down. All right. Therefore, I said, okay. Now, did you see the connection of speaking and believing there? Look at this. The disciples, uh, the disciples, Jesus, while Jesus is on the earth, the disciple, this young, this man came to him and he had a son who was, uh, had a, had a demon. He was, he'd have these epileptic fits. And, uh, the man came to him, came to the disciples and said, cast out, cast out the demon. They couldn't do it. They came to Jesus and said, uh, the disciples said, Hey, we couldn't cast it out. Or the, the dude came to Jesus and said, Hey, your, your boys couldn't cast it out. Look at what he says to him in verse in Luke, uh, Matthew 17, verse 19 and 20. Then the disciples came to Jesus. Yeah, Jesus came to him privately and said, uh, came to Jesus privately and said, why could not we cast it out? Look at Jesus' answer. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. <laughs> For surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say. You couldn't cast it out because if you had faith, you would say. If you had faith, you would say to it, come out, and it it come out. You might have said something, but you didn't have faith, so it didn't come out. When you have faith and you say, it comes out. In fact, if you say to a tree, a mountain, it'll move. Are you with me? Do you get what Jesus is saying here? Because of your unbelief, move from here to there, and it will move. And look at this last part. And nothing will be impossible to you. Put it up there so they can say, y'all mark it in your Bible and nothing will be impossible to you. Hit the person next to you and say, nothing will be impossible to you when you live by faith. Look over at Luke 17, Luke 17, Matthew 17. Now go to Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke 17. The disciples came to Jesus. They said, right. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith, increase it. We keep hearing you talk about this faith. They said, give us some more of this faith, increase our faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you don't need more faith. Watch what he says. If you just have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, if you just got a little bit of faith, the key is say to something. Yeah. Say to the mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and, pl- and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Yeah. And which of you having a certain, now he explains how come this works. Because faith is a servant. Watch this. And which is you having a servant plowing and li- or tending to sheep will say to him, that servant, to him when he's come in from the field, come at once and sit down and eat. But, he, but will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper? In other words, faith is your servant. You're supposed to keep speaking. Don't let it sit down. He said if he comes in and he finished the one test, tell him to do something else. Prepare something for my supper. Gird yourself and serve me till I've eaten and drunk. And afterwards you'll be, you will eat and drink. He said, after, you've, after everything is accomplished, that's when I shut up. Does he thank that servant because of the things that were commanded him? I think not. Do you get what he's saying? That's what it's supposed to do. You're supposed to speak to stuff. You're supposed to command stuff with faith. So likewise, when you've done all these things, which of you, which, uh, which you are commanded say we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. Faith is supposed to be spoken. You're supposed to tell it to do things. Now, let me break this down for you. So you understand what I'm talking about. All right. Now, cause people get confused in works. Well, pastor, I had, had to, uh, go and exercise and you should exercise and eat right. But if you're relying on your eating right and exercise more than you're speaking over your health, you're d- depending on your works and not faith. Now all of us, yeah, yeah, maybe you've got a regiment and you may not miss, I ain't missing that gym, but did you miss speaking over your body today? You depend more on your doings than on speaking and believing. I got to go to work every day. I got to go. To, yeah. But did you speak over you going to work today? Yeah. I know you get to work every day, but did you speak over it while you were there? Are you, are you depending on your getting your work? Or are you depending on you speaking and believing? That's the difference. That's what he's saying in that parable right there. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, you do. You believe in your business and you should be diligent over it, but you believe you're trusting in your work. If you're not speaking over that business every day. Are y'all listening to me? How many of y'all got revelation just right now? 
You went to the doctor. The doctor says you got to take this medicine. Yes. Now, if you take that medicine every day, you trust in that medicine. And if you're not, if you're taking that medicine more diligently than you're speaking over your health, you trust the doing of the medicine more than you do what God said here. And I'm not telling you not to take the medicine, but I'm telling you, you better trust in Jesus and not that medicine. Come on, somebody. Oh, I just set a bunch of people free today. Now let's look at Romans chapter four. Watch this. Do y'all get me? You live by faith. The just live by speaking and believing. Not the just shall live by doing. The just live. Ooh. Rhonda hit one of my verses. Ron and Joe hit one of my verses about we have the life of Christ. The just by faith shall live. Have, have, shall have that life of Christ. Jesus came to give us life and life more abundant. That's part two. Just come back next week. All right. That life comes to us and we have it. But to release it, we speak and believe. That's my point right there. All right. Did y'all get what I'm saying right there? Yes. Go to work. Do the job. But if you're, if you're relying on that, I'm telling you, you're not... When, you th- when the doctor gives you medicine or tells you something's wrong, the first thing that needs to come to your mind is, I got to speak over this. Right. Yes, nothing's wrong with going to the doctor. And that's, that's good. That's valid. But the moment you start, oh, I didn't take my medicine today. You need to be saying, oh, I didn't speak over my life today. Yeah, you, t- you watch over your children. But if you're depending on that school to watch over them and you're, t- and you're not depending on the angels that you commissioned over them, spoke over them every day, you're living by the doings and not by speaking and believing. By faith. The just shall live by faith. Speaking and, do- and believing. All right. Romans chapter 4. Good God, I'm going too long. We've got to cut it down second service a little bit. <laughs> Watch this. Because this is so good. Are y'all glad you came today? Tell your mom and them this when you, yeah. Romans chapter four, verse 17. What did I tell you Romans chapter four is? Is how Abraham received the promise. Here it is. As it's written, God says, Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed God. Abraham believed God. Who gives, God who does what? God who gives life to dead things and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. So God called Abraham who was barren. He said, you're a father of many nations. And Abraham, who contrary to hope, it was impossible for that to happen naturally, in hope, in, 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 in joyful expectation of good, he believed anyway. So that he did become the father of many nations. According to what was? He believed. Remember homologia. God said you're the father of many nations. He spoke it too. And here's how God helped him to speak it in Genesis chapter. You don't have to turn there, but in Genesis, I don't think I wrote it down, but Genesis chapter 17, God changed Abram's name to Abraham, changed his name to father of many nations, changed his wife's name to princess. Her name was Sarai. He changed it to Sarah. That day he changed in Genesis. He changed their names so that they would, every time Sarah would say, call his name. She didn't call him Abram. She called him, Hey, father of many nations, come here. They began calling themselves what God called him. So instead of you calling yourself broke, you start calling yourself the rich. Instead of you call you calling yourself cursed, you say, "How did I do that? I'm sick. I, I got. I depressed. All that foolishness. Squash that." Am I smiling? I got to make sure I can get an attitude right here. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm smiling because this is how you're going to change your life. Are you with me? This is why all the proverbs in the Psalms say the righteous, the righteous, righteousness is what delivers from death. Blessings are on the head of the righteous. Read it. I'm telling you, every, every book in the, in the proverbs and Psalms alludes to righteousness. Most of them do. And it alludes to it. And it says a promise that is to the righteous. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. All right. Who, well, let's read. Let's read. Hurry up. Who contrary to hope believed in hope that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. That's what God said. And being not weak in his performance, God's performance, he did not consider his own body, his own circumstances, his own money. He didn't even consider that. All right. Already did since his body was already. He was about 100 years old. Come on. And the deadness of Sarah's room. He didn't even think about that. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. How? Giving glory to God. He took his focus off of him and put it on Jesus. Hold on. My focus in work, instead of putting it on me, I put it on him. 
Are y'all getting what I'm saying right here? My focus, oh, I got to do everything right. I got I to make sure I get all my, talk, cross all my T's. Uh-uh. My focus is, Lord, I thank you that I'm blessed in my work. I need you. Today is a blessed day at work. I'm blessed in all my goings and my doings. I thank you that you've blessed all the work of my hand. Lord, without you, I can do nothing. Yes. That's where my focus is. Now, I'm relying on him to help me see what I can't see. I'm relying on him. I'm depending on him rather than my own work. Yes, I'm going to go to work. Yes, I'm going to give it my best. But my reliance is over here. Lord, I'm looking for promotion from you. Promotion comes not from the east or the west or the south, but it comes from the north. It comes from you. You just raise one up and you sit one down. I'm looking to you. I don't have to brown nose anybody. I'm over here worshiping you. The doctor gives me a negative report. The doctor gives me a death sentence. He said, you're not going to make it six months. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh Uh-huh. God bless you. Lord, I thank you that your word says I will live and not die. I will live and I will do great exploits in the kingdom of God. I will live and not die. This cancer is not my end. This sickness is not my end. This is not my, I am above only and not beneath. That's where my time is spent. Did not consider the doctor's report. Did not consider the bank report. Did not consider. He grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. Come on, are y'all hearing me in this place? And being fully convinced that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. Therefore, it was accounted to him as righteousness. (laughs) Did you see what happened right there? He believed God and God said, you're righteous. Come on, did y'all see this? How did he throw that in here? Because that was the ticket to get what God promised. Therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Next, almost done. Now it, it was written not for his sake alone. Now it was, this wasn't written just for Abraham's sake alone. Was it imputed to him, but also for me and you and Pastor Bob and Pastor Ann and Pastor Joe and, and for all of us. But also for us, it shall be imputed to us who believe in him. What shall be imputed to us? Righteousness. Who raised us, raised up Jesus, our Lord from the dead. Next. Who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Is that the last one? Yes. Close your Bible. Friend, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to know, first of all, God's not mad at you, but he's madly in love with you. And he's got a great plan for your life. And it begins with making Jesus your Lord. And it's so simple. Say this simple prayer with me. Say this, Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that you are Lord. Come into my heart and be my Savior. I believe the scriptures say if you said that simple prayer, you're born again, forever forgiven. God's forever for you, never against you. And the rest of your life will be the best of your life. God bless you. Proclaiming the gospel of grace. Learning to live everyday life multiply grace 